everyone, it's Darby from RejoiceAndCreate.com and I have a Mother's Day video for you today. And today I'd like to demonstrate this. Now this is a modern looking, I suppose, teapot, which is a treat holder and a gift card holder. The compartment inside of this measures three inches by four inches by one half inch deep. And it will hold a couple of tea bags and a gift card from their favorite online craft retailer. Um, if you have a gift certificate instead, all you do is fold that up and tuck it in with the tea bags. Because I thought for Mother's Day, it'd be perfect for mom to have a cup of tea and sit down and go shopping with her favorite online craft store. But if your mom likes coffee, put a couple of the coffee sticks in instead. And then perhaps you could fit also in some chocolate. Now I made this project around Christmas time. I made a Christmas version of this with a plain card stock and I had to mat it with some pattern paper. But because we have such beautiful pattern cardstocks that are available through many different retailers, then it makes a beautiful project. But if you want to do the cardstock and then mat it with some pattern paper, I will link the Christmas video below. For this one, I used the Painted with Love Designer Series paper from a Stampin' Up. I used a white doily, a gold doily, a starburst punch out of Calypso Coral, and one of the um, stitched circles. And the stamp, I was looking for a nice scripty Mother's Day stamp, and the one that I had in my stash was actually from Tallard Expressions, the Happy Mother's Day, and this is simply stamped tulips. Um, and you can go to Tallard Expressions if you're interested in that one. And the little bouquet down there I created with the uh, Blossom Builder Punch. And just punched a bunch of them out from different things and uh, assembled them all together with glue and glue dots and put it down there. And I tied it with a finely woven powder pink ribbon, which I'm going to use again for this one. And let me tell you what you need. Okay, for the teapot itself, you need a piece of cardstock, and I'm using the Sweet Soiree this time, that is eight inches by eight inches. And that's essentially all you have to have <laughs> to start it because you can embellish it any way you want. Now I'm going to use a white delicate doily because there's more silver in some of the Sweet Soiree papers. I'm using a silver metallic doily this time. My Starburst Punch, I'm going to either do it out of, I think that's uh, Pear Pizzazz, either out of Pear Pizzazz or Marina Mist. I'm not quite sure yet, but I went ahead and punched that one with a Starburst Punch from Stampin' Up. And then I'll use the Stitch Circle uh, Framelits. And I used the smallest one actually for a little tag I put on in the back. And that love always is also from that Tallard expression. And the second from the smallest is the one that I layered onto the Starburst Punch. So start with your eight inch square piece of paper and line up two diagonal corners on the quarter inch mark. Um, I know you can't see the bottom of it, but it is on the quarter inch mark on the bottom and I'm lining up at the quarter inch mark on the top. And once you get that lined up, Go ahead and score and then turn it 180 degrees so you're doing the same thing on the other side of the diagonal. It'll be parallel to the score line you just created also on the quarter inch mark. All right I don't know if you can see that very well at this point. Maybe on this side you can see it better. So there's two diagonals that are a half inch apart because we did a quarter inch from the diagonal on both sides. All right, so now turn it uh, 90 degrees so that your previous scores are perpendicular to where you're going to score now. And line this diagonal up at the one and a half inch mark. And then turn that around 180 degrees and do the same thing. One and a half inches. As I said, I can't, you can't see my bottom, but it's also at the one and a half inch mark. So let's fold and burnish our score lines. If you see, there's four triangles on each side. There's one on each side. So a tri there's a triangle, a triangle, a triangle, a triangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the halfway point and just cut up to the um, place where these two score lines meet, the first two score lines that you'll meet. 
So line up this score line and this score line on your ruler, or use a ruler to line it up, and you'll see that it is five and a half inches long. Half of five and a half is two and three quarters, so just make a tick mark there so you know. Now, alternatively, you could do this as well, just using at that score line, just kind of bend it up and just pinch it, and then you know where the halfway mark is. But I'm going to go ahead and mark them all. Sometimes my fingers are a little fumbly, and I don't want to be putting creases where I don't want them. So let me just take a moment and mark these. All right, so I have all four of them marked, and what I'm going to do now is just take a pair of scissors and cut from my mark up to where those two score lines intersect on all four triangles. Now let's go ahead and make our tabs right away. Our teapot is going to be like this, and then which means that these are going to be our glue tabs. So we don't need it that big. So just about a half an inch from the score line on each side, go ahead and trim your tab parallel. And that'll help us get some of the things we don't need out of the way so we can work on what we do need. And on each side, you'll see the where the two score lines end, just cut across. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting the point out of the way. All right, do that to the other side as well. All right, so now we're going to start forming our teapot. So go ahead and stand this up and put those two points together. Now this will be the top of our teapot. One side will be the handles and one side will be the spout. And whenever I get to this point, I just feel like singing the little teapot song. But what we're going to do is we're going to round this corner, and you can use any corner rounder that you want. I do have a one-inch quarter rounder that I um, bought from EK Success, and um, I did order it online. And I really like the one and a half inch punch because it gives a nice rounded, a, a big rounded edge. Um, all you, all you have to do is. Um, tuck those into the cutting track and make sure it's all lined up on this side and this side and you can use the circle punches as a corner rounder and I'm going to do that as well with the handle side because on the handle side we'll need to round the edge as well now don't uh, don't round the uh, spout side yet because that won't, then it won't look like a spout so you can do these individually I'm going to go ahead and try to do them both together but go ahead tuck that into the uh, cutting track till both sides of that corner meet and punch. And that gives us a nice big rounded edge for our handle. The next thing we're going to do for our handle is to make the little hole for it. So go ahead and line those back up again. And you can see your score line right there. So we're gonna kind of bring our, our handle just about up to the score line, but not over the score line, because that's where we're gonna adhere our tab. So take your one inch, circle punch or something close, it doesn't have to be exact, and put it right over where that corner is, all the way up to the um, score line. I don't know if you can see it in there, but the score line's right there. It's almost to where this won't go any farther. But then back it up a little so you're not at the score line. And go ahead and punch. And that gives us our little handle for the teapot. Now the last thing that we're going to do is work on our spout. So go to the spout side and line up your two points for your spout side. Make sure I get those lined up. And you'll see again, you have that score line right there and there's the, uh, the point for your spout. So what I did was halfway, and you can eyeball this, it's not exact, halfway between the score line and the point, I took my one inch circle punch and put it about half inch or a little bit less than half inch. So let's see, there's about halfway. I'm going to put that in there about maybe a little less than half inch. You can certainly adjust it either way, depending on how you like your spout to look. And that gives us the little spout look. Now it's not quite complete yet. We have to do one more thing, and that's just to take from that score line a pair of scissors and cut from the score line to the bottom of that 
half circle or semicircle that we did. And that gives us something that looks more like a spout. Okay, do that on the other side as well. All right, so now we've got our little teapot. Let's go ahead and glue it together and then we'll decorate it. So I'm gonna use the score tape. And I'm gonna put it almost up to the uh, score line. All right, go ahead and burnish that down well. And we'll go ahead and peel off that score tape, two at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and stick one side of my teapot on first and then the other side. On the same teapot side of both the tabs, go ahead and do that. And if you have any um, glue sticking over from the score tape, because I use the full half inch score tape and from side to side, just go ahead and put that over. All right, so let's go ahead and turn that over. And what we're going to do is we're going to line up this score line with that score line that we created. So pull it on up. If you need to stand it up to make sure you're square, that's fine, because that's what I usually do. It usually helps me when I do that. And stick it in place. Okay, and do the same thing with this other tab. Line up that score line on that side with this score line by the spout and then stick it down, okay? Now let's take off the other backing for the other sides of the tab and we'll do the same thing on this side. All right, so one more thing I'm going to do before I move on to the sentiment is I'm actually gonna take a glue dot or some sticky strip or something and just adhere this back and this spout. So line them up well and stick it right together. Same with the back of the handle. Now I'm using the white doily, as I said, the silver uh, doily as well. And I have a scrap of Whisper White here for the Happy Mother's Day. All right, so I have Happy Mother's Day in Rich Razzleberry. All right, let me go ahead and stamp for the tag too, over here, love always. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the smallest one for the little label on the back, the tag, and then this one, and I'm gonna kind of snug it, the Happy Mother's Day down to the bottom so I have room for that butterfly. All right, let me cut those out and I'll be right back. All right, now let me stamp the butterfly from the Hold On To Hope stamp set, because I think that's really pretty, and I'll put them right up over here, oops. There we go. So let's start building with, um, I have some triple leaf punch from with pear pizzazz. I'll see which one looks best, my pear pizzazz or my marina mist uh, starburst. And I'm going to punch out some small flowers. And I'm using a very old punch from Stamping Up so I can punch out a few of the flowers out of powder pink. But this, there's a similar sized flower both in the Tree Builder Punch and the Blossom Builder Punch. And I'm sure if you look around your stash, you probably can find something that you like as well. I went ahead and used the back of my piercing tool and my mat and made some dimension on the flower, gave it a little bit of curving. So let's go ahead and build our sentiment. All right, so let me put some Tombow on this. Go ahead and build with Tombow and I'll glue my doily. Now, this doily is not perfect. It is symmetrical, but it doesn't have a big point on both ends of it. So I want this little flourish right here to be on the top, whereas this doily is symmetrical. So I'm gonna put my top part right where that doily is. And most of the time, maybe people won't recognize it, but I have that obsessive compulsive thing going on. All right, so let's see which one looks better. Let's see, does that one look nice? That's rather pretty. What about this one? Yeah, I like the blue one better. What do you think? You have to let me know. I wish you could tell me which one you guys would want it. So let's go ahead and do the blue one. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and glue this onto here. 
and then put that up with some foam tape or dimensionals, whichever one I can find first. I guess dimensionals because I found those first. So let me center that one. There we go. So that's really pretty. All right, let me move that out of the way so I can put this onto my teapot. And you can do which way you want. If you want the handle on the right side, if you want the handle on the left side, either way is fine. Go ahead and center that. Now I punch one of these intentionally with two because I wanted to have a little bit of variety. So let me cut off that last little stem. And then I'm going to glue this one to the top part and glue the three one part to the bottom. So I'll tuck that one in up here. And let me glue the one with three on it onto the bottom because that's where I put my flowers. here. Of course I have to get around my dimensionals. There we go. Oops. All right, let me put that there for a moment and I'm going to put some pearls on my little flowers. All right, so let's use some glue dots and put these on. I think I'll put one up over here on this one and two down on the bottom. All right, now it's time for the good stuff. Let's go ahead and put our tea bags in. And these are a little bit poofier, so what I'm gonna do is actually put one up and one down like this so they kind of nestle with each other. And we'll tuck those in there. You could certainly use one of the three by six bags to do this. I'm going to tuck a gift card in. Actually, this isn't the one I'm using. I have another one that, that I know she likes. Or this is where you could fold up a gift certificate and put it in there as well. And because I know my mom loves some dark chocolate, I'm going to go ahead and chocolate bar right in the middle so she can eat some chocolate, have some tea, and purchase some favorite products from her favorite online craft retailer. Of course, you could always go to the store as well. So to finish it off, what we're going to do is we'll take the 1 8 inch uh, punch or whatever you happen to have. I'm going to punch the top of my tag. And I'm also going to hold my uh, top of my tea bag together. And just from both sides, half an inch in, I'm going to try to make it even. Try to make it easy, as even as possible. And then I'll take a length of the powder pink ribbon. This is 16, probably about 20 inches and thread it through. All right. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is to take some linen thread. You can take twine or whatever you have on hand and thread my tag and put it on the back. And I just threaded one of my little arms underneath it. And tied a bow. There we go. Make that a cute small one. All right, 
and it looks like it's staying pretty well but you can certainly use a glue dot to hold it in place if you want to keep it in one spot and that's our project today a very sweet mother's day teapot tea bag and gift card holder and as she shops for her favorite things she'll have a nice cup of tea and perhaps enjoy a little chocolate as well so i hope you enjoyed the project today and give it a try if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe it really helps my channel grow if you need any more information please go to rejoiceandcreate.com and as always until we meet again i hope your days are blessed bye